the Joker. Following Cesar Romero's time in the paint, several cartoon clowns were created, though shockingly, none of which were created in his image. And while the mustached man left behind big clown shoes to fill, it feels like none of the follow-up Jokers even attempted to fill those clown shoes. Not only are these Jokers not nearly as memorable as the original, but these Jokers just aren't memorable at all. Case in point, in a lot of online lists or even timelines of the character's history through various adaptations, it's these iterations that are almost always forgotten. On the rare occasion that they do pop up in a rankings list, they're always ranked dead last. Going from worst to best, they're at the top of the list, and that's because they're the bottom of the barrel. Make no mistake, these Jokers are being lumped together because they're so easily lumped together. They're all of a similar quality, with a similar performance, a similar depiction of the character, and in some cases, an identical look. Not to mention, in terms of a timeline of Joker appearances in media, these performances were back to back. To back. Spanning from the late 60s to the mid 80s. A far cry from the days where we'd wind up getting several versions of the villain on the big and small screen within the same year. But before I break down each version individually, I want to point out that these versions of the villain are pretty much equally bad. The actual portrayal of the character doesn't really vary. Each actor feels like they're half-heartedly attempting to recreate the previous actor's performance. But what's most strange is that this one act that seems to be duplicated over time doesn't seem to resemble the only frame of reference for the character that was out at the time. These performances couldn't be any different from their predecessor. The first Clown Prince of Crime put to pen and paper was played by actor Larry Storch. The Adventures of Batman was an animated show that was clearly taking some inspiration from 1966's Batman. Which isn't all that surprising as that show ended around the same time this one began. Most of the voice actors were solid sound-alikes, with Batman and Robin both looking and kind of sounding like their live-action adaptations. But the same couldn't be said for this show's Joker, who neither sounded like nor look like the inaugural Clown Prince of Crime. At times, it sounds like he's attempting to sound like Romero, but I don't think the actor ever truly pulls it off. I don't know how else to articulate this, but he sounds like someone's bad impersonation of a 1950s gangster. <laughs> That's what I call a real gasser. Good show, Masked Man Hunters. Sorry I can't stay for the finale. <laughs> Don't be silly, old boy. I'm not going anywhere, but you are. Shooting us dogs? Dig until I tell you to stop. If the loot's not here, move to a new spot. No! You're d dead! You must be! Yay! Help! Missed by a mile, boy blunder. Quite frankly, he sounds much more like one of the Miser Brothers than he does the Joker. It sounds less like an actual performance and much more like a parody. His ghoulish laughs are more goofy than they are diabolical. But to be fair, that might have been by design. And speaking of designs, this one is fine. It's fine. You know, it's okay. It has the devil horn hairdo the character is often given. He's got the ruby red lips and cheeks to rival a Cheshire Cat's. Kofi means my face! The attire seems fairly comic accurate. I was really ready to call this one of the worst, but... I don't think that it's aggressively awful like some of the other adaptations of the Joker have been. I don't think it's particularly good when compared to the character's more modern Marvels, or even on its own if you're judging it by today's standards. But when judging this performance based on what it's a part of, I think that this conveyed the character just fine. But I also think that that's a big problem with this version of the villain. His look, his voice, it's all just... fine. Just fine. It's okay, but it being passable doesn't make it memorable. I don't think people necessarily hate this Joker. I mean, most of the time, they can't even be bothered to remember it. But if this Joker does come up in the memory banks of others, I feel like most people are just indifferent to it. It's not really good enough or bad enough to be remembered. But it was, however, good enough to allow the actor to return to the role years later, in 1972, in the new Scooby-Doo movies. 
As this was the first major team-up between the Caped Crusader and the Scooby Gang, this iteration of the clown is probably somewhat better remembered. While this was supposed to be a crossover of sorts with the original show, bringing back the actors to the roles of Batman, Robin, the Joker, and Penguin, there were also some changes made, specifically to the topic of conversation, who is now depicted as being a little bit taller, and his hair looked still devilish, but a lot more, well, plausible as a hairstyle. Despite the change in appearance, the performance is largely the same. However, I do think the actor's voice does better suit this new look. Wrong, Penguin. You turn them about. And turnabout is fair play, not foul. <laughs> the Cape Crusaders could never catch us. <laughs> I'll force him to tell us where it is. Oh, it's just a tire rolling towards us. Uh, step aside, Penguin. Yes, <laughs> we mustn't be impolite. We should entertain our company. Right, Penguin? It was your fault, you featherbrain fathead. <laughs> Fiddlesticks. If they don't enter, we won't have any fun. While the Scooby-Doo movies gave us an old Joker with a new look, the new Adventures of Batman gave us a new Joker with an old look. Having the character look identical to the Joker from the Adventures of Batman, but being given a new voice actor in Lenny Weinrib who pretty much played every villain on that series not named Clayface. The performance feels at odds with itself. His laugh is much more high-pitched and ear-grating, while his voice is strangely deep for a Joker performance. He also doesn't speak like he's a nefarious villain. He speaks like a show's narrator filling in for an absent voice actor. Nothing against the actor who's playing the part, but considering that he played so many of the voices on the show, it's clear that he wasn't cast in this particular role because he was the right man for the part. He was given the part to play because he was present. This actor excelled at attendance. And that is it. To say he doesn't do the role justice would be a bit of an understatement. Greetings, Batbrain and Boy Blunder. I, the notorious Joker, will stage the biggest ripoff in the history of Gotham City. <laughs> Your plan? Who made you boss of this chicken outfit, Penguin? The throttle's broken! We can stop! This is my house, and in my house, I am the boss. You handsome uncle clown, you. <laughs> you really think so? Once again, this is another case of a bad betrayal, but it's not so bad that it's good or so bad that it's entertaining. It's so bad that it's... bleh. I hate to say it, but this part is rightfully ignored. There's just nothing to it. The character's design being recycled isn't by mistake either. They didn't just accidentally recreate a Joker that was similar to a Joker that existed before. This was a strategic, intentional decision made to save costs on animation. So for the vast majority of his time on screen, you're not seeing anything new with the character, but instead recycled animation cells, just continually being repurposed. Sometimes, multiple times in the same episode. I'm not going to complain too much about it, this was a standard of Hanna-Barbera in Filmation at the time. They used every part of the bull, several times over. But it was a little bit distracting in making this video, and extremely noticeable. Quite often, you're re-watching animation used in the original animated series that's now slightly reworked with a new backdrop. But to make matters even worse, the Joker's laughs are reused ad nausea, with his cackles copy and pasted repeatedly. <laughs> The show did, however, give him a sidekick slash pet in Giggles the Hyena, which I think is honestly where the show has the most fun with the character. But when Batman's biggest villain is being upstaged by his cackling pet henchman, you could see that it's probably a problem. It is interesting seeing that the Joker was affiliated with hyenas for such a long time. There's definitely been a history of the character and company housing hyenas. Whereas the animated series had Bud and Lou, Birds of Prey's Harley had Bruce. Of course, being that there's really only one wild animal with an even wilder chuckle, it's unsurprising that such a connection was made. However, I will say that Giggles really steals the show. The character's constant annoyance and begrudging love he has for his pet, quite frankly, are some of the most entertaining moments within the entire series. There's just nothing about this Joker that comes off as original or distinct or, well, even just good. He sounds so disingenuous in all that he does that it's hard to tell when the Joker's making a joke 
or actually being legitimate. Though upon researching this video, I found out that the voice actor is actually the voice of HR Puffin stuff. So I will now immediately stop complaining because that's a show I go to when things get rough. The Joker would later appear in the Super Friends final season, with the show now being branded as the Super Powers team. Though strangely enough, the Joker spent a lot of his screen time incognito. The Royal Flush Gang made their debut and started wreaking havoc at the orders of their leader Ace. But as it turns out, this new Big Bad was neither new or a Big Bad, as Ace is unmasked to reveal that it's none other than the Joker. And then it's revealed that the Joker is actually working as a henchman for Darkseid. Not really the place of the Clown Prince of Chaos that we know today, but given the fact that this was 1985 and the character was hardly fleshed out outside of a comic book, I think it's much more forgivable. This time around, the clown was played by Frank Welker. Wait, who's Frank Welker? Frank Welker is the voice actor behind Megatron from Transformers, Slimer from the real Ghostbusters, Fred over there, and even Scooby-Doo! He played the part much more whiny than any of his predecessors, sounding sort of like a gender-bent version of a stereotypical witch. The character came off like an annoyance, but I also think that that worked for the story that was being told here. Joker irritates all those around him, including his superior, causing Darkseid to carelessly discard the Joker as if he was playing a game of gin rummy. Ah, how did you know? The Joker's lap has always lost Tin Man! <laughs> the superpowers old headquarters will soon be our new base on Earth! I assure you, there will be no more surprises, Darkseid! <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it's, it's not my fault! Sure, as soon as Darkseid gets back! <laughs> it's kind of surprising that for as long as the Super Friends was on the air, for as many years as that show was around and as many iterations as it had gone through, this is the Joker's sole appearance amongst them. Apparently that comes down to rights issues and where the character was actually licensed to be used, not being used up until this point because he had already been used in the new Adventures of Batman. But I'm glad that the Super Friends got an official Joker in their canon. Not that this Joker was anything to write home about. Ultimately, this one just isn't that great. But again, judging based on the time period this took place in, I don't think it's horrendously bad either. It's just camtastically goofy. And considering that this is the Super Friends we're talking about here, he feels right at home. As a matter of fact, I'm the one out of place if I'm judging him for that otherwise. So these were the first Jokers ever animated. Suffice it to say, the Hanna-Barbera filmation days were kinda rough. It's not the worst start, but I wouldn't say the character's beginnings were exactly a high point in his history. So with all that being said, if you liked this video and would be interested in seeing me take a look at the next batch Jokers, let me know in the comment section below by leaving a comment saying, What a Joker. I am vengeance. I am the knight. And that was V Infuso. Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. So if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too would like to become a V-generate, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, nerds! And if you're not joining the fun, you're in for one bad day. And you know what they say about having one bad day. <laughs> Catch him next time. Same bad time, same bad channel.